This crochet top has a lazy look. It's straight and therefore quite easy to make. There are two different types of stitches in it. The yellow one is a bit looser on. Two of my daughters are modeling this here and I'm showing how to make the top in size small. And at the end of the video, I explain how to change the size. Here we see the shape of the whole top. So it's very boxy and simple. We start at the bottom and until where the sleeves start, we go round. So there's no seam in the sides. And then the bit after the sleeves start, we go back and forth. The stitches are always the same. We start at the bottom and there's always four rounds of these stitch and then these flowery looking things. That there. And then we repeat that. Except that at the very top, here's the sleeve and the neckline. At the very top, there's a couple of rows of treble sort of netting. And this is also something that you can use to make the sleeves even wider if you prefer. Here are the measurements of the finished garment in size small. You can screenshot this. At the end of the video, I give some pointers for changing the size. You need mercerized cotton to make these. And I have been using two different kinds. So the yellow one is in this one. And the, what I'm working on now is this here. As you see, they are not the same yarn. Both of these are board weight yarn. These two work slightly differently. So to get exactly the right size, I had to use slightly different size of a hook. I'm using Clover Amour hooks. You can check the description for links. This one is three millimeter and this one is 3.5 millimeter. For the yellow top, five balls of this was just enough, but I would definitely recommend getting six balls. Six would be enough for a slightly larger size, at least a size medium. And now I have six balls of this here. We start by chaining 234 stitches. And I always mark every 30th stitch, so I don't need to count each stitch many times to make sure I have the right number. Now, it's important that this chain is not the length that the final garment will be, because uh, the stitch we are using, it contracts it. I mentioned that we make allowances for small changes in the size. So what I do, I have marked now the stitch 234 and I'll chain about 30 more just in case that we will then undo at the end if we don't need them. So chain 30, about 30 more before we start the actual stitch here. And now you can actually remove the stitch markers and we'll start the V-stitch. Now we start the V-stitch and what we are doing, we will first make the first row before joining it into a ring. I'll explain later why. First, we start a double crochet into the fifth stitch from the hook here, but we don't finish the stitch. Leave it here when you still have two loops on the hook and then start a second one in the third. So you skip two and go into the third one and start a double crochet. And at this stage, when we have three loops on the hook, take a yarn over and pull through all the three. Then chain two. Again, starting a double crochet now in the same stitch where this previous one is here. Like that. And then without finishing that, start another one, again skipping two. And now again, when we have three loops on the hook, pull the yarn through all of them. So it's sort of going back and forth like that, one type of a V-stitch. Chain two, and again in that same stitch, Leave it there without finishing, yarn over and skip two and again. So 
this is what you repeat, just always the same. So go like this now until quite close to the end of your chain and then we measure how many stitches we actually need. Okay, now I have made this long enough and what you need to do at this stage, I, I have some of the chain left here because I didn't need it all. You need to measure this now so that it goes round what, whoever it's for and remember that it needs to be quite loose. Here's a photo of Yasmin wearing it and it needs to still be loose on the bust. So check that. And because it's straight, it's very loose sort of above the waist. When you get the right length, there's something you do need to count now, calculate at this stage, because this here needs to be in multiples of six stitches. So you need to have an even number of these V shapes. Count these downward V shapes and they, you need to have them in even numbers. When you get to that stage, then we join this into a ring. And now when you are doing this, make sure that it is not twisted because that's something that you can't fix afterwards. You would have to undo it and have the hook at this stage of the stitch that, that it's the downward V here and not quite finished. And then we are using this here to join it into a ring. And whatever length you have this extra chain here, just leave it hanging. We'll look at that later. But now I'm joining this by inserting the hook into that start of the row and uh, making a stitch and then pulling through all of these. So that joined it now. And as I said, we'll sort this out later. And then we start the next round. First, make a slip stitch into that chain space there. So we are starting it inside it, not at the join. And each round then starts and ends the same way. Chain four. And we start the V stitches from the same chain space where we were there. So it goes in that same one and then start a new double crochet in the next one. And now we have three loops on the hook and take yarn and pull through all of them. Chain two and a double crochet in that same chain space. Starting a double crochet again, not finishing and another one in the next one. Again, when you have three on the hook, pull the yarn through. And this is what we repeat all the time. Chain two, starting a double crochet in the same hole, chain space, and another one in the next one. And now pull together. So this is what you continue. Go right round and then we look at how we finish off this round. Here I'm coming close to the end of this round and uh, right here I chain two and still start one of these stitches in that same chain space. But when I have these two loops on the hook, then I'll take the yarn by going through the start of the round. So right from there and through all of these. So that's how it joins it nicely. And then we start the next round just the same as before. First a uh, slip stitch in that chain space and then chain four and uh, in that same space and then in the next one and uh, continue like this. And also, of course, then finishing that round the same way as well. So now I'll make two more of these so that I have four rounds of those V stitches. And then after that, we'll go into the rounds of making those flowers.
Next, we'll make these here like flower petals, and that's all together three rounds. One, two, and then three. We start right where we are after finishing the last round of V-stitches and uh, chain five. And then we start a double crochet into the third stitch from the hook here. But leave it here and make another double crochet in the same stitch and then take a yarn over and crochet those together like this here and another one like that chain three and then again two double crochets in the first stitch without finishing them first We have three loops on the hook and then join them together. Then a double crochet that attaches it to the previous row. Skip one of these upward V's there and go to the next one. And a double crochet there. So we'll always skip one of these we go past two of these chain spaces and continue the same chain three and double crochets in the first of those chains double crochets joined at the top and one more chain three and joined double crochets. So now again we have two and then skip two chain spaces and a double crochet in the next sort of upward V like this here and keep going like this the whole round. When you come close to the end just first make one of these uh, groups and then to finish off to get to the right place to continue what we do now we'll make directly three double crochets to the start of the round so instead of chaining three yarn over and start a double crochet at the start of the round and another one in the same place and yet another one and put all those together so now we are at the place where we can start the second round of these flowers we start the same way by doing two of these little groups just exactly the same way and another one there and now what we do we will always attach these in between these two groups so not where there's the double crochet but in the middle so um, insert the hook in there no not well here and uh, make a slip stitch and then continue so we continue from that same place so again chain three and now we make these two stitches in that same place where we attach that previous group of double crochets so this is what causes the sort of a flowery looking thing and then just another one And again, I skip to the next one in there, slip stitch and continue exactly the same way. So always two of these groups and they attach in between the groups of the previous round.
So here, finish the round with a slip stitch. And then to continue, we need to start from here. So um, use slip stitches to go up. Oh, it's hard to get it. <laughs> to go up on the side of the first of your uh, double crochet groups. You need three slip stitches. Ah, split again. to get to that middle of it. Three, actually four, yeah. And first chain eight. And then we'll have double crochets always in between when we have two of these uh, groups, we'll have double crochets in the middle of it. So a double crochet here and I just go round this here middle bit a bit tight so that it attaches there properly, like that there. And then chain five and skip to the next one. So this here one that's sort of hanging, not that one where we have many stitches here. And also check that it's at the same spot as the double crochet in the before these here petals like that and make one more so chain five and skip to the next middle bit here and continue like this right round this is a quick round that's it and now we continue with another block of four rows of v stitches the first row of the v-stitches is slightly different here, so let's look how it goes. First chain four. And just like in the stitches, go in the same place where the chain starts. And um, do half of the double crochet. And then we always take the middle one of this chain of five for the other side of that stitch like that and then you chain two and uh, again in that same chain stitch and then skip to the top of the double crochet there so this is how you end up having the same number of stitches as in the previous block so it stays the same size so continue like this, this, so it goes in here and then in the middle. So one, two, third out of the five. And like this, and um, still one more. So you continue like this, you just make sure that you always use that middle one to, to make that their stitch. And then we simply continue like this until you get to, the, to where the sleeves start. I'll take the other one here. Here, so at the moment we are in here now. So what you will do is that you will have three blocks of V stitches with these two flower petals in between. And then we will start the sleeve. Work until here now, before coming back to the video. Right, so now I am at this point where we start the sleeve. And you see that there are three of these flower petal things, each taking six. So we need to chain 18 at this point. First chain 18 and then we chain to start the row. And then we have to do that also at the other end. So at the same time, what you can do is to fold this exactly into half and mark where the other end is, where the other, where half of the stitches are. So that will start the other sleeve on the other side. Here I have chained 18 and then we chain five more. One, two, three, four, five to start those petals and those we work exactly as before 
So you go back into the third one, just like we have been doing all along. And make two. Like this here. And then a double crochet into the eighth stitch. Eighth. So skipping seven. And then continue again two petals. And as in the beginning, you'd skip five. The sixth one. And then one more, which we will then attach to the actual work already. And then where you started the chain, uh, double crochet into that there bit. It's hard to get it through. And then continue just as we have been doing this. So always two petals and, and skipping two chain spaces until you come to halfway. So where you would have put the stitch mark and then we'll see what we'll do there. Now I work that row to where the stitch marker is. And then we need to have um, a chain here too, to make the same kind of a start for the sleeve. So what I have done, I took a piece of yarn from another ball of yarn that I have for this work still, and chained 18 on that. So chain 18 using a different ball of yarn, or the other side of the same ball, and then attach that and take the part where you ended it, mine actually <laughs> came loose there, and uh, attach that 18 chain stitches there, the chain. Just go through and another stitch and pull the yarn through. So it's just a piece, an extra loose piece like this that we are going to crochet on. And then continue again making two of those petals. And then just like before, skip five and uh, double crochet in the sixth and so on. And then, and then make two more. And then we'll look at how you do it now that we are going to crochet back and forth instead of in the round. There's that. And then we turn and go back and chain five. And uh, now that middle where we attach those petals is here. So only make one petal here into the third. There and then when you turn, then again attach it in the middle. And uh, can keep going just the same way as normal then. So now you make two and attach it there and uh, keep going until the end of the row. Here I am at the end of this row and then at the end, finish it off with a treble, two yarn overs, putting that at the start of the row. Okay, and then next we need the row of just double crochets in there and that goes exactly the same way as when we are going in the round. So you start with chaining eight and then having the double crochets always in the middle here. But at the end of that row we'll look just at how we start the v-stitches when we are now going back and forth all the time. Comparing to the other top we are here now and what you need to do now is four rows of the v-stitches another one of the petals and then two rows of the v-stitches and after that we'll make the neckline and then continue towards the top 
And then the other side we will do separately starting again here. And a new row of V stitches always start with chaining four and then start in the V stitch in that same stitch where the chain starts from and then just the same way going into the middle stitch and so on. So keep going four rows of V stitches, one row of petals and two more rows of V stitches. So now I'm at the spot where I need to start the neckline. This doesn't fit into, <laughs> into this at one go. And the way you do it, find first the center of the piece by folding it exactly into two. And then from that center count both directions uh, six of these points, one, two, three, four, five, six, and mark that and six to the other side too. And then what we'll do, my um, yarn is in here, so I just continue because I have here, I have two rows of um, these stitches, so I do two more and uh, then a row of these petals and then another four V stitches. And then we look at the top of it, because then the top of it is one of those places where you can alter the size a little bit. I'll go now to the first stitch marker and then show what I'll do there. So here I am at the first stitch marker and I made the last stitch so that it went into the same chain space as the stitch marker. And then turn and then I'll go in here and again the four and continue and then just go back and forth until it's big enough. So if we look at the other one we are now here here and then I'll finish these four rows of v-stitches and then that and another bit of v-stitches and after that the other side the same. So I'll do this side now to that spot and then we'll look at the rest of it. And after that's done, we'll do this sort of a netting type of a thing. So I'm here now and then those two rows of netting, chain seven. And we are simply making trebles with chaining two in between. Treble means two yarn overs and um, Insert the hook at the top of the stitch you have there. Chain two. And another treble into the next stitch. So like this and uh, do two rows. So after you finished one, start a second one again with chaining seven there. I would now leave quite a long tail before cutting it because we're going to sew it together with the back then here. And if you want the sleeve to be even wider than this here twice, then you can add a, another row or two of this netting. Otherwise, just then do exactly the same on the other side where you have the other stitch marker. So after you have finished this side, start from the same side um, where you are here. So I started this way, the first row, it just it looks better if, it's the, if it looks the same and then you attach the yarn here and start the other one going back and forth like that. Now I have both of the elbow bits done and then we need to do the other side. I have this set so that the bit where I don't have this uh, top bit done yet is towards me and we are doing the other side almost the same only we start slightly differently and then I chose to do the back neckline higher, but you could also do exactly that same. But let's start. So um, take hold of this here, bottom of a sleeve, and attach your yarn to the same chain that we started with. So a stitch there. I normally make a stitch so that I use the yarn double for the first stitch so it's strong. 
and we need this same, these petals here. So we start doing it exactly the same, just using that same chain. So uh, I have one stitch there. So uh, two, three, four, five. And uh, exactly as we were, were doing all the way. Two of these petal things. And then we attach it again using a double crochet in that same place where you have already the double crochet going the other way. So here's one and then you continue just the same way. Another one there, another one there and then continue along that side. Just the same way we have done it before here. So I have started this here new bit is here and then you just keep going along this bit that doesn't have the sleeve bit yet. And when you come to the other end, put your stitches in those same places where the other double crochets have been attached. And now I'm coming to the other end of that and then you just Keep going so straighten that like this here and keep going so now the next one will attach again to this where the sleeve, is act sleeve actually starts like that that attached in there and now that chain starts and then you do that chain the same way as at the other end and when we look at this one that I've already done I have continued the back a bit higher up so that this here bit where you just do the shoulder is much smaller there. In the back I have three rows of these petals and then two v-stitches in between plus one row of the v-stitches. I would suggest to finish with a v-stitch row because this here is too stretchy. At the end of the shoulder here in the back I have not made this netting at all. So I'll finish, I've finished here with the V-stitch row and then we'll sew that together, but we'll get to that. So now just crochet the back. Okay, now I have all of it crocheted. So that's the back and I have woven in other yarn ends except the ones, one that I'm using for sewing up the shoulders Plus now we have to finish off the very start of it because you are likely to have an extra bit of chain in there. So what you need to do with that chain if you have it is I normally use the top end of a needle to do this. Just uh, picking it one by one to um, undo the chain. And after you have done that just sew up, there's this little gap in the beginning, the way we started it, so make a couple of stitches just to close that gap and then finish off this yarn end like you normally would. And then we need to sew up the shoulders. First of all, make sure now that you know which side is the right side for the bottom part of the top that we, we were crocheting around. It means that when you look at it, that the actual stitches are clearly showing. So then you are on the right hand side also in these here petals. But what you need to do now is to turn it inside out so that we are sewing it from the wrong side. So you can still check that now the stitches, you clearly have the back side of the stitches towards you now. And um, just doing one, one first. So what you simply do is to sew up this netting bit to that in the shoulder. So just stitch by stitch, little tiny stitches here. And uh, you may not have exactly the right the exactly the same number of stitches on both sides. So just then skip a bit here and there if, if it's not the same. I'm not one to make such exact 
patterns or uh, anything where I work myself uh, because when it's something that's stretchy you can always work around with a few stitches being here or there. <laughs> that's my my philosophy about crafts. So sew this one up as well as the other side. After that it's finished but after that I will still shortly explain some principles about making a different size top. Because the top is such a boxy shape, it's easy to change it to a different size. There are four ways you can change the size. You can make it longer, you can make it wider or narrower, you can make the sleeve wider, higher, and if necessary, even make the neckline slightly wider or smaller. In all the cases where you change something in the size, you will still work through using the video just from the beginning. Just need to then think, where you need to make changes. The easiest of course is the length. If you want it longer you can add these bits. Instead of having three before the sleeve you can have four or five. But remember if you make it so long that it will go over your hips then just to make sure that it's wide enough. Then you can change the width, smaller or bigger. The easiest way to change the width is at the beginning when you are making the chain and the first round. So what I suggest if you are making it bigger, make a much longer chain than what the pattern calls for and then after you have done the first row where the stitches create the width that the actual garment is going to be, then just keep doing that until you can measure that the width is sufficient. Another way to do it is to make a sample about 15 centimeters, about 6 inches and uh, then measure how many times you need that. If you make a sample, just make it in the V-stitches. These are what determine the size. Then sleeves, no matter what size, I would start them the same. And if you want them wider, then do more than just two rows of this netting at the top. And if you want the neckline wider or narrower, then when you come to the spot on the video where there's three stitch markers here, then move those stitch markers further or closer and then crochet up to them. I trust this helps you to make the top in the size that you need. Until next time.